Good morning, founders. How are you? Hope you are fine and you had a great week. I am Cindy Joel, the community manager here at Founders Network and your host for today. Welcome to Founders Network, where we are committed to foster an enabling environment for SMEs to grow and succeed by enhancing their competence, compliance, and readiness to access capital. I am also an ambassador in the Aspire program. Aspire program is a youth apprenticeship program that targets men and women at the age of 22 to 35 years to help them turn their passion into profit and learn through and learn how to earn through the program. I am part of that program. We help them figure we help the youth figure out their passion and proficiency and then we match them with appropriate contracts and projects that suit their passion. My role is to ensure that SME founders are informed, engaged, and having fun in our, in our Founders Network community, which is a rich networking hub. We believe in having fun while, li while learning. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And before that, let us get to some virtual room guidelines. Number one, mute your microphone when not speaking and, un and unmute before you start speaking. So there's a microphone that below or above, you can mute it when you're not speaking. Use the chat box to respond to messages. Avoid distraction, put your phone on silent. Open session browser only. Tweet at hashtag Founders Convo, hashtag Founders Network, and also turn on your cameras. Today we'd like to see you. I'd like us to take a reflective poll, a poll that will set the mood and tone of this conversation today. I would like to ask, how many of us have a digital strategy? This word digital strategy has been severally used and it's beginning to kind of sound cliche because everyone is digital strategy, digital strategy. So what really is this digital strategy? And do you have one? So we are going to take this poll. So according to my poll results, 41% have said no, they do not have a digital strategy. 27% have told us they are not sure what a digital strategy is. 18% uh, are saying, yes, they have a written digital strategy. Then four are saying, uh, then 14% are telling us they post regularly. So to them, they assume that is a digital strategy. What is this digital strategy actually that we should take in note of? Because even the government has paid attention to it. And we have seen them wanting to start to impose tax on the digital platforms, which to us, it definitely means it's something we should be aware of. It is something that we should really, really know that what is it? Because it's already a clear indication that online presence is currently growing to an extent that it has attracted the government attention. So we should really know what it is. So even if they want to start taxing the digital platforms and strategy, I'd prefer if they tax it and we know it, what it is all about, and we also utilize it. So if they tax it, you're utilizing it. So let, let, let this opportunity not pass you by of learning what digital strategy and platform is. And that is why we continue to hold Founders Conversation to share insights and strategies to grow and succeed together. We want to remain current in the current season to support SMEs through constructive talks that if put to practice, will shape their businesses. We call it conversations because it is meant to be an interactive session. This is not one of those boring, monotonous lectures. So it is a conversation, let us converse. So for me, on my honest opinion, I don't really think I have a number there because I'm a very active follower on social media platforms. If I really post, no, mm -hmm. I have never even posted. I don't know the last time I posted, but I am active, I am following, I am reading. I am those ghost followers that one of our speakers once said that Kenyans follow, but at least I like and comment, so I'm not badly off. <laughs> so to me, that is my comfort zone that I should work on. Uh, as for the digital strategy, and tools, I can see my quarantine colleagues, they have really been giving me challenges. Of late, I have seen them taking photos of me. So when I wake up in the morning, I already find photos of me while I was asleep or while I was doing anything. So to them, that is a digital strategy. Then now they know it should be posted. Now I want to start posting because of them. 
possible and they want to follow up if it's posted and put it into practice. Let us be accountable. We are going to engage you on digital marketing strategies. Why is it important in our new normal? Why now? And the insights on how to get started. Our communication director, Chisubire Greg, who will talk to us about the digital marketing strategies. Please help me welcome Chisubire Greg, a content creator who paints the world beautiful with words. For her, words is like she draws the world with just the words she uses. She's a storyteller that will keep you glued to the screen. Her art of storytelling appeals to both young and old. It cuts across all ages, which is very interesting at this point in time of the generational gap. She's a loving mother to one son, whom she dearly loves, and they take walks with, the, with, her, with her son as a form of bonding. She's a spiritual lady whose open-mindedness makes it fun to work around her. She has over 10 years of expertise in the digital marketing space. We are honored that she's the SME Founders Association Communication Director because her knowledge, oh my God, when you talk to this lady, you always want to talk and talk and talk. So, Chesubire, welcome. Wow. When you introduce how somebody like that, where do you want them to start? <laughs> Anywhere. So, how have you been? I'm well. How have you been? I've been so well. So our participants should take their notes, uh, notebooks and pen. It's going to be very interesting. To be very engaging, I hope. I will be hearing from what I know. Do me a favor, please put the the slide in 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 full screen. Okay. So I'm working on that. Thank you know, we can be. All right. I, uh, good morning, everybody. I hope it's not as cold where you are as some places I know. Um, Karibuni sana to this session. We will tackle the, the topic in what I hope will be very interesting ways, things that you probably already know, but with new dimensions of explanation and perspective. Um, in the poll, I found it interesting, the question of, I post regularly, is that a digital strategy? And I'm also very surprised that Madam Cindy is a professional follower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, team following. Now I understand some of our on, your online behaviors, but it is why. <laughs> so let's start at the very beginning. You know, when we hear the word digital marketing strategies, we think of what corporates do, but it's very easy to get overwhelmed with big, big explanations. From my perspective, digital marketing, marketing is simply creating awareness on online platforms. Now the awareness, if you, might, if you look at the slides, the slide says your products and services, but there's also awareness of you as a person. So many of us think of the strategies for our businesses, but we don't develop our own personal strategies. So whatever business I'm working in or working at, there's also Chesubire as a brand. Who am I? What am I doing? How can I improve my life and everything else around me? So those are the two aspects we forget. My personal digital strategy must align to who I am as a person, and hopefully my business is aligned to who I am. If I say I believe in nonviolence, but I'm, I'm building a business that, like, like, bad example, but that's the best example I can think of. If, if I say I'm <laughs> nonviolence, but then I'm building a mafia type business, there's a misalignment of me and my business, right? The yes. way to authentic on the digital platforms is to be true to who you are as a person. So I hope for all of us, our businesses are in line with what we believe. So when we say online promotional techniques, the next thing that comes is, but there are so many platforms and you can see the whole list there. And these are just some of the platforms. I haven't added the platforms for the young children. So under social media is where we have the bulk of the, we have very, 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 very many platforms. There, of course, we have Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, um, Google+, Plus, all those things. And every day there seems to be a new app or platform developed. We have websites. Now, last week, Jao did a fantastic job about websites and the importance of them. And then recently I've been hearing that websites are dead. Please do not be lied to. There are trends in the market. Like right now, one of the biggest trends, which I haven't put here, is podcasts. 
So recently, I'm a writer by profession. So somebody was saying, um, writing, reading is dead. I said, no, 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 people read. So you have to know which one to pick. In certain, depending on the market you're targeting, and we'll get to that shortly, it will determine which platform you take. So you could do your website and do it well. You could have videos, blogs, digital ads. Now, the one I keep pushing, and I will continue pushing for a long time, is articles. Now, many of us think articles have to be journal articles, but I, I will challenge us to think about a place like LinkedIn, which is one of the professional social media platforms, because there you're able to communicate. We also have emails. Um, that is how you got your information about, uh, you get information about Passion Profit, Founders Network, Founders Conversations. You get those on emails, which means email still works. Search engine optimization, which is making sure that the, the, the ranking on the online platforms, especially around Google, Bing, and Microsoft Edge, it makes sure you're found near the top. SMS is also digital marketing platforms because you know that SMS you get from Naivas, sale on, or the SMS for those who've ever been to Souk. If you ever pay by Mpesa at Souk, they start telling you this week, Monday deal, tomatoes at 200 like that. <laughs> because they're coming into your space, right? You don't have yes. to go to the shop to see the sale. What we are doing is a digital marketing strategy, online meetings and webinars, because then you're able to come in, we can invite you into our space and help you learn and expand your knowledge as you expand our knowledge. We have apps, of course, when you need to read something or you have those who have fitness apps, your app now brings you an advert for Tala, Branch, KCB, Standard Chartered, like that, right? So those are all digital marketing platforms and Google AdWords, but that's the higher tech piece section. So when you think about uh, digital marketing, I'd like us to take a broad, we'll take, um, we'll do a high level view and hopefully we will be able to gain some insight. Next slide, please. So the, the common pain points we have as uh, anybody engaging on the platform, and I remember when I was starting out, um, Cindy says I have 10 years experience. 10 years ago, I started a blog and I started it because I had, I had stuff I needed to say, but I didn't know where to say it. But the biggest thing that stopped me starting for three years, because in, in 2007 is when I first had the idea, was how do I even start? What, what do I know? I don't even know how to do this stuff. And then the reality was, it was my perception of me. You know the way fear can make things look bigger than they actually are? So one day I said, what the heck? I went looking for on WordPress. I found, oh, free. So that dealt with one of my biggest fears of how much will it cost to host a blog. So I got a free site. Once I overcame that, because I had already been on Twitter and on Facebook, I was like, now I'm adding a third one. Will I even have the energy? Now that is 10 years ago. Imagine all the platforms we have now. So there's a sense of overwhelm. There are too many places. I need to be on all those, all, all those places. It's too much work. I cannot think. So then you get stuck. Analysis, paralysis by analysis. Too many places. I don't know what to do. I will not go. The next thing many of us say is I don't have time. Do I sell? Do I write? Do I take care of my family? Or the people of faith? Do I go to fellowship? Do I go and share awards? <laughs> we decide that's the one. We'll go to fellowship. <laughs> You know, some of us, those are the choices we have to make. Eh? Or the reality exactly. of I'm on, I'm on all the time and the digital platforms are on 24-7. And then content. How do I know what to share? You know, everybody says content is king. Eh? But the reality, yes. you as Cindy have things you know about that I don't know about. Just purely, even let's just be based on experience. There are places you go comfortably that I do not go. So you can tell stories about those places, right? Yes. The content is what is inside you. So if I know nothing about IT, I have no business writing about IT unless I am get, I'm getting somebody to do ghostwriting for me. All right? <laughs> then, have you ever posted and nobody likes comments? You don't know whether anybody saw. Have you ever had that feeling? Hey, Kenyans are notorious for that. They just pass. 
But can I tell you something? I have learned through the years, a lot of people actually read. They just don't comment. So let me give you a very, very funny story. I was thinking to change how I do my stuff online. So I have a weekly blog. And uh, at the height of a very deep season of why am I writing, nobody presents, nobody, you know, nobody responds, nothing. I put up a post which I thought was too personal. It was a very raw post because um, of what was going on. I think it was somewhere around, it was around one of the terror attacks. So I put up a very raw post. There were no comments on the feed. However, like 10 people came into my inbox and said, guy, you said it better than I could have. So I'm like, you follow my content, you follow my content. And that's when I discovered that there's this thing called silent followers. I don't get them, but they're <laughs> there. And the other thing I realized, if I'm writing be and I'm getting upset because nobody's responding, then maybe my reason for writing and putting out content isn't quite on spot. Because when we write for numbers, posts, likes, shares, then we cease to be authentic. So then we are now focusing on, so that comes to my last point of focus. We are focusing on how many people liked, how many people shared. So when it's silent, you begin to think you're not adding value. So those are common things that many of us um, go through. It is probably not the full list, but these, in my opinion, are the best six, the common, the places that digital marketing stresses us. Next slide, please. So now let's come to a place of just beginning to figure out um, where we start. When we say strategies, of course, we're all looking, we're all thinking big, big sounding words, but I want to make it very simple. And I will use myself as an example. Define your audience, right? Who are you trying to reach? So for me, as an individual, on my blog, I write a faith-based blog, which seeks to break down the tenets of my faith into realistic, livable things. I don't, know if, I don't know about others, but I got to a place where I'm like, this Christianity thing is nonsense. It's a list of do's and don'ts. But as I began to interact it within myself, I found the reason was every, everything seemed so high sounding and unattainable. You're told to live in certain ways, but who else around is living like that? So when I began that blog, it was to just a place for me, first of all, personally, to explore the matters that are disturbing me. But then in conversations, I began to understand that there are others around me with the same struggles, right? So yes. then that my target market. Other people like me who are trying to make sense of this Bible thing and how it applies in life. Because so many of us, it doesn't make sense. I can't take, at that point I was saying, I can't take scripture and directly translate it to my business. <laughs> Which scripture is that? Give us an example. <laughs> well, here's an example. Um, in the place of diligence, let me use Joseph. Joseph, we know his story. He was the second last born of many brothers, right? Yes. He had a dream when he was 17. He told his brothers they hated him, right? He yes. told his father, you were not beaten. Do you think even us, we will bow before you? But he held on to the dream. He fought with his brothers. He got sold into captivity. And everywhere you see the story of Joseph told, it talks about his diligence, his ability to stay on the task. Everything he touched, everywhere he worked, flourished. Even in the prison, he was made the head warden, and the warden sat back and sat pretty because he knew everything was sorted because Joseph was in charge. And he meets the baker and the butler, and we all know that story, and he ends up in front of Pharaoh. What got him to Pharaoh? Many of us, we talk about diligence. Blah, blah, blah. The day I understood it was his ability to stay faithful to his vision, the thing that God gave him. It began with a question to myself. All the gifts have been given, all the things I do, Am I true to where we started with God? Or am I just doing heavy heavy and adjusting because of the challenges of life? It took me years to be able to uh, translate things like that into my life. But that's just an example. 
So then it brought me to the next point of where is my audience most active? Now, there are several things I needed to do. When I looked at my people, my people were on Facebook. I was very comfortable with Facebook. So I stayed there for a bit. But as time has gone and as my journey has evolved, I have found that there are other platforms I must learn to engage. Now, remember that the listing of digital marketing platforms was at least 12, right? Yes. So now let me, let me put that one aside and pick up a business. If I am selling shoes, the place to sell shoes is where, Cindy? Instagram, photos. Exactly. <laughs> if I am selling to under 35s. Yes, if you're selling to under 35. Now, if I want to find Frida, where would I find Frida? <laughs> Facebook, of course. <laughs> exactly. So you see, I have to ensure that I have an Instagram account where I put up the shoes that are hip in that generation. So my loafers, my sneakers, my sandals, and some cool work heels will be there. And do the same on Facebook because I am going where my audience is most active. But you see, I've done it an audience definition. I'm looking for the young female age 22 to 45 or 60 because they have disposable income, which means they will sell, they will buy X number of shoes a year. So if I translate four pairs of shoes per girl per year, very conservatively for certain age brackets, it means that if I am able to reach 100 people, 100 people and 10% buy, you see, you do the math. But that math is not the only thing to do because if you're online doing sell, 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 people get bored of you. So every so often I have to find what else is interesting and throw it in, which brings us to the content mix, which is what I call the winning combination. When you've determined the platforms, I say top two for starters, what's your content format? Now format depends on where you are. Now, if I'm a shoe person and I'm going to LinkedIn, am I going to show shoes, shoes, shoes all the time? No. No. Adding the value of how to choose um, the shoes that fit your body type. Or let's say I'm short and I've got a back. So you're giving tips to people who want to, you know. So if, if I'm looking to do orthopedic shoes, it will be giving information about what is valuable to people with different conditions, right? So I'll be looking at talking about um, shoes with special cushioning or um, how to choose the right kind of heel for your height, your weight, all those things. So you're giving information. You're not just telling people come here and buy. You're adding value to the conversation. And the next thing is to set up or reactivate a platform. Now, many of us, the poll of last week said 65% of us have online platforms, but we don't post actively. Now, active posting is not five times a day. It is consistency. So you have, when you reactivate your platform or you set up on that platform, choose your frequency. There are brands that post every four hours. There are people like Cindy who post now. <laughs> there are people like Chesubire once a day, you know? choose your platform and then set up your frequency rule of thumb if you're doing a blog do one at least once a month now many people in my sector will tell you the more you post the better and that is very true but what if you don't have the capacity to post every day i say start where you are when i began blogging i blogged once a week once a month and it was a headache, and there were months I would miss. But I determined to be specific. So what, what did I need to do? I needed to write often. So I joined um, a challenge called five, my 500 words a day because I was struggling to write. When I did that, I got better. Please go back a little bit, Cindy. I got, as I got better, I was now able to develop and move to once a week at a set time. So my blog goes up every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Now as I've gotten more confident, I am able to post twice a week. 
it, but I have to prepare. And every post, quality images gets you further. So if I'm going to post, um, if, if, I, if I'm going to post a, a good story with a fuzzy image, there are people who will not come, right? Yes. So then at the end, okay, what I must be sure to do is quality content. Content goes across. Content completely goes across. Quality text. If you cannot write 3,000 words, it's fine. There's no problem. First of all, people rarely read that much. But make sure your image has a good caption that draws people back to what you're doing. Okay? All right, next slide. Let's continue. So we've talked about audience definition. We've talked about the, the, the location to post and the right mix. So I say, start. That's all I say, start. Now From for some where? Of us, wait, for some of us starting to actually take a deep breath and say, I will do it. Okay. Right? Take that breath, Cindy. Just take it. You can do this. That is step <laughs> one for most of us. Okay, step I hope two. everyone is doing step one. <laughs> Please okay. take a deep breath and just decide to start. Step two is understand that one meaningful post a week is better than nothing. All right? But the other place you can start is do something that Cindy does, but don't do it for as long as Cindy has done it. <laughs> Read people's posts and make meaningful comments. That's a starting point because you begin to test that your content or your ideas are meaningful. If I go online and I find somebody talking about youth affairs, which is something I'm very passionate about, I am willing to put my name out there and ask a question of something in their content that doesn't, um, I don't understand and get clarification. I'm beginning to position myself as somebody who has these conversations, right? So yes, just yes. begin one post a week and make a meaningful post on some, a meaningful comment on somebody else's post. Now, I also need us to understand that um, we have to get past the point of posting just for likes and traction because your authenticity comes into question. If I'm just following passion profit to, for them to like and come and buy from me and they never come to buy, I will get upset. But if I'm posting because my stuff is valuable, it will pay back. I need to put this out there and a few people in my space will be annoyed with me. Digital marketing is a long game. It's a, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. I wouldn't wake up today and have a million people on my platform. Two years ago, Twitter went through the feed and removed bots. And many celebrities lost up to 50% of their following because they were bots, they were robots. They were not real people. I would rather you have a hundred authentic followers because one authentic follower gives you traction. If I like what let's say Winfred posts, I will share it with somebody else. I may not be the first buyer. And we know the rule of buying. People don't buy on the first time of interaction. People buy from people they trust. So digital marketing, in my opinion, some people don't agree with me on this one, but in my opinion, digital marketing is about building trust online. So if you come and tell me Coca-Cola poisoned you, my on um, my online interaction with Coca Cola, uh, <laughs> doubts about it. Okay, right? because I have over the years enjoyed their products when I used to drink soda, and over the years I have trusted their content. And when they have had content that people have questioned, they have pulled it down. So I know them as an authentic brand, right? But I know that because I followed them. I mean, I like Coke because when they started, they started as a little sort of thing being mixed by a chemist. But when they were expanding, and I like using them when I'm thinking about stuff, 
they asked themselves during the World War, how do we get Coca-Cola to every soldier wherever they are stationed? So they used the military um, transport to get refreshment and something from home for their soldiers. That's how it reached the world. They piggybacked on somebody else's system. Now, the digital platforms give us places to piggyback to reach people we would never see. I have followers on my blog from India. I've never been to India. They have all done this from the comfort of Machakos County, right? So uh, your digital space is a place where you're online and you're global 24 seven. If you want to be found, then you need to begin to be authentic. So who I am as Chesuvere on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn is the same person. It's just that on the different platforms, I tweak different stuff. So where do we start? If you do not know how to, how to move forward, get help. Simple rule of thumb. That's why some people have jobs like me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We help, we help people. The first place you need to start when you're getting help is to audit your current state. Where I am, where I am not. And if I have platforms that are dead, I need to know I have platforms that are dead. So do an audit of your current state. That audit will help you clearly state what your gaps are and what you need, right? Yeah. And then you find the right team. Now by team, I mean, if Irene has some fantastic photos she takes and shares, I can go and ask her if I can use her photos and give her credits. Those of you on Instagram, you see like, um, um, somebody will post a photo, like, like when you see a celebrity, they post their photo and then they say photo creds too, and then they give credentials to the other person. So you, you get, you do give and take. So if I use a photo that Cindy took, I give Cindy credit for the photo. So there I'm building, I'm already building trust and authenticity because people are like, she won't steal my photos. So I see a photo I like online from Jackie, I'll be like, can I use your photo? Because the other behavior we have online is using photos that do not belong to us. So that <laughs> strategy is tied around authenticity. Who am I as a brand and what do I want to achieve and what value do I give back to the world? When you're talking from a place of value, right? People yeah. come. People come to see and they will trust that what you're doing is going to add more value when they buy. So by the time you buy a pair of shoes from me, I already have gone, like one of the, some of the guys I buy shoes from, we buy, we buy, because we, we see them online and we buy. And because I'm so happy with them, every so often I, I share a photo of my shoes, my feet in shoes, and then I tag them. You can't go wrong with so-and-so. So that is what I talk about value. Value in terms of beyond Beyond when you buy this shoe, it will change your life. You tell people's stories, you tell your stories, and then you tell product stories. So that way you're not always on the track of buy, 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 because we are good. Brands that say buy, 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 we disappear. We're like, ah, to invest at two at a time. I'm to disappear. We disappear. But if somebody says, um, I bought shoes from Winfred and they were so comfortable, that's how I have the person I buy shoes from now. Because I said, I was looking for shoes. And a friend of mine said, try these guys. I tried those guys, A1. Five years later, I don't buy shoes from anywhere else. Because I'm like, these guys deliver to me. They never give me excuses. They've never given headache. So when someone says, where are your shoes? I tell them, I buy from so-and-so. Here is their number. Where are they? I'm like, I don't know. I order online. A rider brings me the shoes. And because I have a special foot size, that I've built such a relationship that the lady sends me two pairs. This one, I'm not sure which will fit you. I'll send the rider with two pairs. You, you keep the one you want. Right? So how, why would I go anywhere else? I even dumped butter. I dumped everybody else for this one girl who brings shoes in from China because she understands me as Chesuvire. I think let's take some questions so that we can make this more interactive because I can talk for the rest of the day. You know me. I know you, because Josubede does not want to talk for the rest of the day, because if we leave her, he, she can dominate here. So at Josubede, someone is asking, 
Mm-hmm. The question I had seen from Nora Mboya. Nora was asking, please put your questions in the chat box so that I can see everyone. So Nora was asking, how do you start up a blog? All right. Same concept. Who are you and what do you have to say? That's the starting line. So you, def- you define what you're talking about. So I follow, I follow a guy online. He's called Jeff Goins. All he does is talk about writing every day of the week for the last seven years that I followed him. And you see, he has taken writing as what he talks about. So most of us think talking about writing will be about just how to put the words together. But he covers things like um, how to find your, your, the, your genre, how to find, how to keep your mojo going, how to get past writer's block. Oh, did you realize you can take t- downtime and do one, two, three, two inside to influence your writing? So you choose your content and then you choose a platform. I'm biased here. I'm not making money, but I love, I love, I love, I love, I love WordPress. It's very simple, very easy to get online. So you choose your platform and then you choose your frequency, right? Are you going to write once a month? What? And please, let me be honest with you. Okay, somebody needs to mute their mic. Okay. Don't try and do every day like the guys who, out there who do every day. It takes a lot of traction. To write a blog every day, it means you must be doing like 500 to 1,000 words every day and preparing in advance, right? So you, you yes. choose your timeline, your frequency, based on what your current capacity is. Once a month on every third fr- Friday at 9 a.m. is a good starting point and you build your brand and consistency. And then you keep writing, keep learning, keep trying. And then share it with people and say, please read and give me your honest feedback. By the way, feedback is the best thing. If somebody says, I hated your article, don't catch feelings. Just ask them why. Because the reality is that's your opinion. But engage them to understand their perspective to improve where you're going. If it's a completely diametrically different um, perspective, you are richer by asking that one. Does that help? Yes. Mm-hmm. So, Chesubire, you will just hold it there. Chesubire is still with us in the room, so we have some goodies at the end. Stay and remain to see what Chesubire will talk about. Chesubire, thank you so much. It is funny how time flies while you are just tapping into your knowledge, but just hold it there. Chesubire might be back with us soon, so just stay and with us. So at Founders Network, we believe in networking. We really believe in networking and working every step of the journey with you. We are happy when clients give us testimonials of how we impacted their entrepreneurial journey. That alone gives us zeal to be committed to our vision. And today on Spotlight, we have Roslyn Mutai. Roslyn Mutai is the founder of Two Tire. She will share with us briefly what she does and the impact Passion Profit has had on her business. So welcome, Rosalind. Stage is all yours. Hey, I feel like I should be handed the mic. Uh, good morning, everyone. <laughs> good morning, <laughs> Rosalind. How are you? <laughs> very well. Uh, thanks very much. Chesubire, right? Wow. Yeah. Uh, but, okay. And thanks, Cindy. Thanks for having me here. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, I, I'm it's interesting to be on the spot. So it's, I'm just going to jump right into it. So my name is Roslyn uh, Motai. I run a company called Top Tier. And uh, Top Tier is an organization that um, works with any, orga- any business, pretty much. Any business, any team that wants to work in such a way that makes it easy for their customers and employees to interact with them. So we believe that um, by supporting the people and organizations uh, to, to create simple, clear, and engaging processes, they can increase their productivity and their profitability. So in a nutshell, we help people make work simple uh, by just simplifying what they do and making it really clean and simple so that uh, w- wh- the people that they are working with um, and the customers they're interacting with are able to do that in a, in a transparent and easy manner. So. I, 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 I interacted with um, Passion Profit last year, around this time last year, actually, May of 2019. And I participated in a program called Profitable Brands. 
and what that was was an it was an it was a group it was a group coaching session and what we needed to do every every week was come up with uh, the things that we were doing. The, first of all, our big vision about why we were doing what we were doing. So I really like what Chesubiri said about um, you, running a business that you connect with, that you're passionate about, and doing something that um, allows you to contribute to the world. So I think uh, what, what one of the, my and w the focus of this of profitable brands was uh, gen I think the, the the focus was many things, but I think for me the big aha was something that's been talked about here about generating leads and not likes. You can get people to <laughs> like the content that you put out and that's fantastic. It may make you feel good, but whether or not it um, generates business for you is something and else entirely. And I think that was my biggest uh, take out because it's, it's nice, it's, it's human nature. And I must admit it's even for me, <laughs> it's nice to see that a thousand people have liked the content that you've put out. And then, so then I hear now that we have silent followers. So it's very easy to <laughs> give up <laughs> because you're thinking that nobody is, nobody is following, nobody is liking what I put out. So it's very easy to quit and stop and, and stop and stop putting content out. And so for me, I think that's, that's part, probably a big take out from this session for me today. See, I'm still learning and just uh, understanding that keep, just keep doing what you're doing because whether or not people are talking about it, um, you're generating interest. And so I think uh, what, just to fo go back to profitable brands, I think the big thing for, for me was just understanding that, you know what, I want to build a business. And because I want to build a business, then I need to get into my database, people who are prospects, people who are people who can actually in, a, in the future, whether or not they buy now or whether they buy in the future, they're actually people who can benefit from what we do as a business. So I use every opportunity when I go online um, as, as far as possible. I mean, I also put out past, uh, content that is social. So it's not all business, but for my business, for my business pages, I, my, my goal is to build up my database of prospects. So qualified leads, people who can, who in the future or who may now in the near future buy from us. And so that's, that's really the thinking that my, my strategy with going digital is to be top of mind, to position as an expert in my area, which is, re, which is process improvement. So my idea is to position as an expert in that area. So anything I put out there is for that reason. And anything, when I make a call to action, the call to action is to grow my database of prospects. So very clear position as a, an expert and then grow my database of uh, prospective clients. So that really is for me, it's not about how much it's nice. And I must admit it's a, it's a real fight for me because it's nice when people like what you put out, but it's important when it's, when it's related to business that you're clear about what the strategy around your content creation is. And so for me, um, just, just understanding that, just understanding that has really helped me and I'm really grateful for to passion profit for that. And I think the other thing is just understanding the other thing that I took from this uh, session was the other thing that I took from this session was that it's not one size fits all. So uh, we also, we also put out content. So we, the people who get onto our database of prospective clients. Um, so now we have their emails, we have their phone numbers they get very targeted messages so that when we are, um, if we have, we're putting out something that we know they can be interested in, then we send that to them. They don't get everything that we are putting out. There are people who are interested in uh, one element. Some people are interested in, in our training. Others are interested in our hands-on work. So they get information depending on what they're interested in so that we don't um, lambast our clients with all manner of messages. Uh, and they're thinking um, it's very easy for people to unsubscribe when you send them stuff that <laughs> they are not really interested in. So that's I really a lot of for stuff. me the the big thing. Yeah, and and I got that from attending uh, profit profitable brand. So just to wrap up this, and uh, my big takeout is just to say that be clear about what you want. It may not be clear in the beginning for you, and I like what what 
Chesubiri has said here, it may not be clear right off the bat, um, but as you go along, then you start to understand this is what I want. If what you want, if your vision for what you're doing is clear to you, then what you put out in terms of content, what the content that you create and post and put online uh, will start to align with that big vision. So uh, don't, don't fit, um, allow yourself, allow yourself the space and the leeway to grow into the kind of content that you want to put out. So I like this idea of 500 words per day uh, and then increase that to um, one, one, one serious blog post per week. Whatever it is that you need to do, whatever works for you is what you need to do. But make sure that it aligns first of all with who you are and then what your business is doing. I think that's, that's what I would say. So thanks a lot, Cindy. Uh, thank you, Rosalind. Before you leave, would like to, to, I'd like to ask you a question. How did you find it when, when you joined the Profitable Brand? What did they help you? What are the two major takeouts you took from your journey during Profitable Brand that you improved on? And has okay, great. So, far? <clears throat> so th at the point I did this course, I was actually on maternity leave. So the big, it was, I was kind of like doing it like, okay, let me just <laughs> fill in the time. <laughs> oh, to be engaged. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, the big thing for me was, um, the big thing for me was uh, just generate leads, not likes. I think that was the really big thing, you know, and just, uh, yeah, it, it's very easy to just want people to like you. And, and that's okay. People, there are people who are influencers and, and they put out a post and within like two minutes, it's like a thousand people have liked. By the time it's up for seven hours, they've gotten 24,000. You're like, what? How did they do that? 6,000 likes. You're like, wow. But that's, that's, that's may not, that, that is for some people. That's not all of us, right? So just be clear about, I think, be clear about what you want uh, to accomplish with uh, with digital for your business, because if that if that's clear, if you if you are able to align, if you're able to align what you want to do, um, if you're able to align what you're doing with where you you what you see, what your eye sees, then you're able to get over the fact that nobody liked it, <laughs> right? Then one day, like Chesubire, you will have ten people inboxing you and saying, "Wow, okay, you said that better than." I could have myself. So that was my big, that was my big ticket. I, 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 I feel like that really hooked all this up for me because it's very frustrating when you want to start. Um, when you want to start, it's, 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 it, there are many things. I think the first slide was talking about that. There's, there, you have fears, you're not sure where to start. There, 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 there are common things that could prevent you from starting are those not, not knowing, not knowing where it will go or how it will go. So I think that for me was just crystallizing, helping me crystallize exactly what it is I want to do. Um, uh, this, the, this, the session allowed me to crystallize exactly what it is I wanted to do with my digital platforms. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Rosalind. You can share your contacts, how we can keep in touch. People are asking, yeah. how can they keep in touch to know more okay, about property? Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> share that. I think I, saw, I think I saw a question for me online from me <laughs> and i'm happy to from belina right yeah so belina i'm happy to uh chat, chat with you on the side because this is not my meeting so <laughs> i'll hand it back to cindy <laughs> ah thank you so much rosalind you can type chat belina you can type chat rosalind thank you so much for taking up the spotlight section so rosalind being here as a founder it has really been encouraging we have known one, that is what, just one of our many online programs that we have, the Profitable Brand. And we really have a lot of online programs to ensure that founders can be able to, let me use Rosalind's words, crystallize their digital marketing strategy. So today I have some very good news for you. Do you want to, to be like Rosalind to have a very crystallized digital marketing strategy? Do you want to be able to not feel afraid when we don't like your posts <laughs> or when your posts don't garner a lot of likes because it is actually discouraging in comparison to others. So today we have one of our business mentors in the room who will take you through the steps of joining the Founders Network. 
is there anybody who will be interested in listening to know, to, more, to know more about the Founders Network and the online classes you can take to crystallize your digital strategy? So if you are interested, please raise up your hand so that one of our business mentors can be able to guide you to make an informed decision. Raise your hands. I'm seeing people who have raised their hands. So continue raising your hands. We are going to move you into a different room. Do not worry. It's a very safe space, a different room with our business mentor. We will not harm or eat you because we, are, we believe in uh, thriving founders and mentoring them. We are not founders eaters. We are founders mentors. So we will not eat you. So just raise your hand. We'll move you into your separate room where you can ask questions get information and help you make an informed decision. Jackie will move people who have raised their hands into a separate room with one of our business mentors. Do not be left behind, raise your hand. Then for the us who, who want to remain in the main session, Jackie is going to move people to the, into the room with our business mentors. So please keep raising your hands. I can see 11 have raised their hands. Jackie will start that. And then for us who are going to remain here, we are going to continue with our session. Chesubire will come back on board. There's this point she said about getting help. So Chesubire should come and tell us, where are we getting this help from? How do we get this help? As the people who, who want to know more about Founders Network go to their separate room as we are enjoying ourselves here. So Chesubire, and don't worry, just go to the next room, then you will be able to get the session as we are continuing, it's not going to take long. So Chesubire, welcome on board and tell us about this help thing. Where do we get help? Where can I, after breathing in and out, where do I start? Wow. Remember I said, when I said get help, I talked about finding people who actually do what you do. That's why I have a life, that's why I have a job. Anyway, so, um, help is, First layer of help is the digital audit. So what we are offering today, okay, some, Irene, please mute your, sorry, Sheila, Sheila Toya, please mute, thank you. Um, when I said get help, I started from do an audit, right? Look at what you already have. Like I have seen questions, I think it's Mudangani, I hope I got his, the name right. Eh? I hope so too. <laughs> was talking about how writing comes easy, but then he needs a, need, needs a digital strategy. So the help comes in several places. I talked about a digital assessment, which is to sit down and look at all the places you're on and, and who your audience is and how you are able to capture that. So for today, we are giving, we're actually giving away um, an online digital assessment. The reason being, that is a starting line for getting help, knowing what you what you want. So let's say you are online, you are converting people, then your next place would be, your, sorry, you're, you're, make, you're making contact, you're generating leads. Your next thing would be conversion, right? So then the help you would be looking for is specifically conversion. So then uh, it, we would now be looking at linking you, helping you find the, um, the right product. Very often the challenge with conversion is our internal processes. So I've come here, I have talked, I have people asking me for help. So I have 10 people who reach out and say, oh, I like what you spoke about, how do I go ahead? I, we give you a digital strategy, you do. And then now I, have, I already have people in a corner, right? I have people in a box. The most difficult part from there is actually engaging those people. So figuring out what do people want, how are they going, where are they going, what which of my product list matches their need. So say all I want to do is to be able to post regularly. How do I now generate that content? Um, and the reality is unless I can work the system internally to make sure that I engage with those people and I draw them back to the, 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 um, the thing that drew them in, I will fail at that conversion because conversion is driven by me. Let me give you an example. I also work for a part-time for a digital marketing agency. And we will do projects for clients, do the digital ads, get them the leads. We're generating 200 leads a day, but their sales department is unable to close. And then we get blamed as
you the lead so I, I conversion depends help we are offering now miss is actually hi can you hear me hello yeah can we you can hear, hear you yeah there are sometimes you broke so would you mind oh, repeating my... just kidogo because the time I you so, broke I, up yes i saw that notice of in, internet unstable so well uh, where was i so i said it was internal the process is internal now when we when we looked across at all the SMEs and startups we're working with, we found that a common challenge is engagement on the digital space. So repeat the point of conversion. Okay, so we, we, we found with most SMEs that we are able to get into the digital space. We're able to come and uh, post one, two, three and get requests, get likes, get orders or get potential interests. Conversion has to be me now going back to everybody who expressed interest and engaging one-on-one. -on -one. I like something Rosalind said. She said, you have to ensure that your internal processes, my, my takeout is seamless. It has to be that for, like, for every email that comes, every request that comes, what's the turnaround time in terms of acknowledging the receipt of that email? When I acknowledge the receipt, it is, thank you. I saw your comment about this. How can I be of assistance? We have one, two, three, four packages, right? Yes. Then if, if they don't respond, hit them up again. In the conversion process, hit people up two, three times, right? After that, I mean, onus is on them to buy, but have I done my part as just suvire to go back and fine tune? I may go back in and find they think they need digital ads, but what they actually need is a consistent presence and a discussion on their product because the key question people are asking about is what does this product do for them, right? So then I come back and I say, but you, you have a hit on us, but this is what you really need to be sorting. Or maybe the comments that are coming in are complaints about quality, all those things, right? So then the reality is when I go back in, I learn, I continue to dig and learn more about my process. Um, one of the things I would recommend is let's come and have a conversation. So today we'll be giving out a free digital audit and assessment tool, an assessment tool that will be shared in the chat box. And I, I'm sure we will we'll probably even send it on the email again, but just grab it from the chat box. It's a very easy step-by-step -step process. And then we will work with, we will look at it and help you begin to work on your digital strategy. Because when we know that the only thing you want to do is generate sales, we will help you think through the process of how to post in such a way that draws people in. Because we're all businesses, we want money. Let's be real about it. The bottom line is to make money. Now, if you, if you have a shop front, what you need to do to be able to convert is to draw people into the shop, either virtually or physically. Like I talked about my shoe person, I have no clue at all where their shop is. In fact, my rider knows me, I don't know. My job is to go online, shop, and they bring to me. They have mastered the art of conversion because when you WhatsApp them, because they say WhatsApp to order, within half an hour of your WhatsApp, you already probably have chosen what you have. So the same process I used to buy my, my shades. I know guys who sell what I like. Hi, what do you have in this color? Within an hour and a half, they have delivered to me if I'm in town. So the conversion process is in you. The audit helps us know where you are and helps us position you, right? And then we, we will take it a bit further. What we have done to help our, our community is we have developed um, digital marketing products, which from as little as, and I say as little as, because from as little as, as 12,000, we're able to give you a system of a few posts a month, plus the content developed, posted, and publicized online. Now, please understand, 
I've seen somebody who says, how do, who has asked, how do we, how do I write, which site would I write a blog on that will make it go viral? Virality of anything is the quality of the content. And the reality of virality, if it cannot translate to, to sales, then the viralness doesn't help. I forget her name, but I was following a tweet a few weeks ago, last week actually, I think early last week, of this social media influencer, quote unquote, who has 2 million followers. So she's viral. Anything she posts, she gets 100,000 likes, but she could not sell 36 t-shirts. So her 2 million followers are of no value to her. Because people are just following. Um, people were just following her. They did not have enough trust in her process to buy from her, which gives, takes me back to the whole conversation of authenticity. If I know that Founders Conversation is a place I will learn every, I always advise people to come, right? If I know that Founders Conversation is a place that wastes my time, I will not go back. So the reality is, what am I offering to the public? There's a question about why the sales teams were unable to, to convert. Yeah, there was a question. Albert Odero is asking, uh, was our team success if the team was successful in generating leads, why mm -hmm. was the sales team not converting them to contact? What were they doing wrong? You see, now I don't know. I wasn't in their sales office, but my assumption is the leads were more than they were prepared to follow up. So let's say, because we were selling, we were helping them sell houses. My interest in a certain house is often time bound. I know I'm dealing with my bank. I can get money at this and this and this time. Or even let's go back to the shoe story. If the person who's given the link to me, um, if the person who, who I have is given the link to me is not pleasant, is not listening. Paulina, please mute your mic. If the person who's, whose contact is, who is given my contact is not, um, engaging, warm, and understanding what I'm doing, then there's a problem. Remember the customer is always right. So if a customer is asking seemingly aimless questions, you know how guys call Safaricom and their questions seem stupid? I have talked to guys at the Safaricom call center. And like those questions are so easy to think through. If the person on the other side is not patient enough to deal with all my questions, I can tell as the buyer, I'll be like, these guys are not serious and I will leave and I will go. So digital strategy is, has to be tied with a sales strategy because we generate the leads and then, does that make sense? So I would encourage all of us to take advantage of the, the digital assessment and then let's see how we can help from there because we have a team of young people who will help develop all the content that you need we have graphic designers, we have uh, people, okay, not Cindy, not Cindy, because Cindy just likes following, but we have people who generate content and we, we, we engage, we can engage for you on that matter. Any other questions I can answer? Just because I do, I follow does not, I'm a very active, at least I comment okay. and I like, I am adding to the likes and comments. But are you buying? Are you converting? You see, the reality of a business, the digital strategy must on the other side. So let me ask you a question. When you have followed a brand that has a good digital um, footprint, what would make you not convert? If they have a good digital footprint and it's a product I want, I'd buy. Well, I just follow and see and, and, and follow and look for reviews, then I'd buy. So your, your determinant is reviews? Uh, necessarily not a review. I'd, I'd really like to know if the product works for me. Because when I'm coming there, I already know what I want that will work uh -huh. for me. So when uh -huh. I'm there, I'm trying to see 
who else ever has had a problem like mine and they got help mm -hmm. mm. so that brings up the next point if i'm able to serve my customers well then they get reviews which means wherever part of your digital marketing strategy is to get authentic reviews for instance booksellers the way you get your books sold on Amazon and get your books ranked near the top is reviews. So then, you know that section that many of us online mm -hmm. say in, is new pussy is the, the um, testimonial section. Many people, and we need to ensure that our testimonials are written right. If it sounds that people are just blue ticking and saying, yes, 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 there's a thing that many of us do not um, think about as good things, which I think are very good things. I think negative reviews are some of your best toolkits. Why? Because you understand the elements of your product that is not working. Now, if you take down every negative review and don't deal with the person, I'm not saying go and fight with them. You know, we ask, many Kenyans have that thing where you give me a negative review and it becomes a fight. No, 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 no. Don't fight with them. <laughs> what do we do with them? When they are on Aribu Biashara. <laughs> no, but it is an on. It, they have bought and they are saying you're aimless. For example, I used booking.com to go to a place in Naivasha and the one constant review was their hot water is not hot. I know that sounds foolish, right? Because when you say hot water, it's hot. But the temperatures they have set their heaters at are low. I mean, it's not hot. It was a warm shower. So when I had not seen that before I went, their general ranking was like a four. So I had not seen that before I went. Then I went and I was like, that hot water, that water is not hot. So I went to, of course, they asked for a review. So I began reading the reviews. And eight out of 10 reviews had the same thing. Their hot water is not hot. Now, if I was that business person, I would take each of those people on and say, thank you. Uh, I will sidebar them first of all and just ask them, what do you mean the hot water is not hot? From the perspective of the staff, that hot water is hot. From me who is used to a blazing hot instant shower, hello, it is not hot. I went to the, um, to the reception and I said, but the, the water is not hot. The guy comes and tells, like any Madam Nimoto. I'm like, not by my standards. So you see the standards of hot were two different ones. And I told her, look, all your reviews say your hot water is not hot. It's not me alone. I don't know whether they've done anything about it because of course lockdown has now happened. But that, is, that for me is the other side of digital marketing. One of the biggest digital marketing tools for people in the hospitality tours and travel, booking.com, Airbnb, Google Maps, because people do reviews there. So one of your strategies is to ensure that your people come back and give you reviews, right? Um, there was a question I saw there. There's someone who is asking, uh, and then uh, because you know, we know you and uh, communication to Tali Tashinda Hapa so. After answering this question, you'll tell us the prices, then we will move on to the next. So someone is asking, I'm trying to say it. Uh, Ma, hey, Moya is asking, let me play safe. Moya is asking, is a, li a life and life career and executive coaching is relatively new in Kenya. What digital strategy will you give to grow a coaching business? LinkedIn, very powerful okay. strategy. Consistent, regular posts on LinkedIn, that would be a good place to start. Um, and then speaking engagements. Well, remember I said one, one digital marketing strategy is webinars. Grow your, your practice to a place and your, and your, your person to a place, because coaching is very personal, beyond the product, even the coach matters. I know many of us in this network, like I joined, I heard about this network many years ago and it was still uh, called other things because of interactions with Frida, right? What brought me back to fully engage is when there was proof of concept. So do you have proof of concept? Do you have a place where you can talk about, you can't tell my story because my coaching journey is very personal, but when, you, when you're online consistently posting, I know a coach on LinkedIn who has never ever done a sales pitch. 
He posts, he responds consistently on people's um, comments. In fact, that's how we reconnected. He's very thoughtful in everything he puts out and he's very deliberate on, um, on where he positions himself. So he talks about projects he's working on, organizations he's worked with. He puts out from coaching sessions, what are the common things he has learned and he begins to share content on that. And in time, people, are, and then he's gotten certification. So he's certified by some major brand somewhere. So in time, people see him as a thought leader. Remember I said digital marketing, there's a layer of it that is, um, that is uh, the long game, long-term strategy. So virality is not sustainable. I don't know if you've seen brands who are at the top of their game and suddenly they crash because they don't have internal structures to support that. Um, so that would be my take. But then it also means we would need to sit down and have a conversation and really understand where you are, where you are at and where you want to go. Because digital strategy is not one size fits all. Let's understand that. We could both be shoe brands. We could both be restaurants. But our strategies will be significantly different. I know a restaurant who, when they launched, they brought Eric Omondi on board to do their digital strategy to draw people in. I was like, Omosh, Eric Omondi, comedian. And you're doing a fine dining restaurant. Uh, those two brands don't go together. If you told me... Um, Derek Banga or somebody else, yes, fine dining, finesse, how to hold your glass of wine, how to dress up for a lunch, yes, I would do Derek Banga. So then, when you look at it like that, another rest, they picked this strategy because another restaurant did it and it went big, right? So my encouragement is that we would engage and do the assessment, and then when the assessment is done, we craft individual strategies. You have to craft an individual strategy. So if I'm, when I move to my next business, my strategy won't be the same as my faith-based blog because the markets are different and the seasons are different. Maybe you, you see a lot of people doing, um, oh, it's Mother's Day, like now Father's Day, we had a lot of bakers doing packs for daddy and guys doing gift packs. But if I, if I didn't think your brand, your cake was good before then, it doesn't matter whether you do a, a, a Father's Day package. Your, project, your, your product is not what I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> eh, that was... Mm. You said we, we do have some packages that we can offer. As, uh -huh. at, at SFA, we have what we call the online business experts, which is a team of um, graphic designers, um, content developers, and we do packages from as little as 12,000 shillings per month that will get you some rough some designs for your online platform it will get you the content development some digital marketing and positioning we so we say from and they go up it depends the lamborghini version like i like talking about is a lot more it's and it's more engaging we have anything from four posts a month to unlimited posts a month it just depends on what you're able to afford one of the things i know we all say we don't have money now my fellow smes if we can put in a few coins to make a few more long-term, I think it's worth it. There are brands we ha I have worked with and we have worked with here that by simply consistently posting eight to 12 times a month, began to build their online traction, which has in time drawn people to their brand. You can have sales that you put digital ad, um, ads behind and generate more leads. But please remember my people, it is the quality of content we put out and the quality of response backwards that we do. So full integration come, please take that free assessment that the, the link has been shared so that even you, you can know where you are. It would be nice for me to know where I am. And then from there, we each figure out our strategy. You can come back to us for help. We are more than willing to help you. Or you can just come back for consultation and let's see how we can all, each and every one of us, grow our businesses online. See, I, Sam, thank you so much, Jesubire, for that. The special offer is there. The link is in our chat session. Please take up the free digital assessment. It, the link is there. Take it up. It's an offer. It's only free for today. So, so those who went to the breakout rooms, welcome back. Enjoy the 
short session with the business mentors and they gave you some goodies. The Subire gave us an offer of a free digital wow. assessment. My three major takeouts for today are one, digital strategy is a long game. So it's a long haul. It's not something you do now and expect immediate results. Two, you should know your target clients and the social media platforms they are in. So it's shoes, depending on the age bracket, Chesubere said we do IG, they are my fans. Then three, I also learned you should ask for help. And Chesubere said a very good way of asking for help is from one of our of utilizing the online business expert specialist, a package that she has given us. So you can start with the you can start the conversation by doing the offer, then we continue with with asking for help from one of our business online specialists. So huh, today is a good day for us. We have yes, it's so nice. Any of the goodies are just making me overwhelmed and I've been breathing and breathing in and out. So we have something called the Founders Profit Academy. And on Monday, which is the 22nd of June, we are going to have the first cohort of June begin using our Founders Profit Academy. You can see the logo there. So this Profit Academy, it's an online academy. It's one of our online classes that we offer. We have some people in the room who are part of this cohort. But due to time, I will not let them tell us how they are feeling. But for me, I'm really excited because they begin their classes on Monday. It's a brand new Profit First Academy for founders since now we are social distancing. And the best part is that we would like to tell you what inspired us to begin a Profit Academy, an online Profit Academy, why we began it, what are the challenges we are facing while coming up with such because as we all say, digital strategy is something in the, it's a, something that goes long haul and it's something you cannot just come up and come into it. It has to be, does it suit your target audience? So next week on Thursday at 8.30 a.m., the same time, we will have our founder. I hope you know our founder, Frida, when she's in the room, how the room gets all lit up. I don't think you'd want to miss that session. So she will tell us why the Profit First Academy, what are the challenges she faced? What, what actually made her think of an online academy? Yes, we've been having a lot of online classes, but why this and during this season? And how can she come up with such a product in such a season? So it means she must really be, she's really a person who is very innovative and really likes to bring out the best in people. So if you'd like to know, the challenges, what inspired her, what keeps her thriving and innovative despite this thing. She's a, she's a visionary by nature. I think that's just her nature, the way God gives us blessings, the way the Sudira is a communication, communicator by nature, Frida is a visionary by nature. So she will share with us our Profit Academy and join us next week on Thursday, same day, same time, and listen to her story, Our Journey of the Profit Academy. So this far, I'll say thank you.